Now we're going to talk about fish selection. Probably the first key to having a good healthy tank of fish is to start with good healthy fish. When you go to the aquarium, look through the tanks carefully and make sure the fish are healthy. The worst thing you can do is start off with fish that are already sick. Make sure that the fins are clear, the eyes are clear, the fish is well proportioned and it seems to be swimming properly and comfortable in the water column. Particularly if you're a beginner, I really encourage keeping a wish list. Now what a wish list is, is when you start the aquarium off, write down all the fish that you'd like to keep into the aquarium and narrow down realistically which ones you're going to be able to have in this tank. Then you can get advice from other people, preferably more experienced, about which ones are the best selection off that wish list. Because you'll quite often create a wish list of 20 fish and find that only four or five of that wish list are really appropriate for your circumstance. Now what we want to understand is that there is number one, number two, and number three fish. So you really want your aquarium advisor familiar with these terms. And when you go to buy your fish, or your corals, or your invertebrates for that matter, you want to ask the people, is this easy to keep? Is this a number one? Can most people keep it? Is this a number two? Some people can keep it, other people can't keep it. Or is this a number three? Is this not normally going to work under most circumstances? So it's important to be aware of how hard the fish are to keep before you try to keep the fish. And then if you do want to keep the fish which are number twos or threes, maybe have some sort of understanding of what its requirements are, therefore making that fish more likely to work under your circumstance. The next consideration is when to put the fish in. In general, putting the scavenging fish in at the start is a good idea to help keep down your algae and make sure that the aquarium is relatively clean. And knowing that if you put angels in, it's best to put any angels you want in the aquarium in at one time. So the angels go in at one time, so they have equal chance to establish territories. Any tangs you want in at one time, so they have equal time to establish territories. Also with clowns, also with damsels, also with any other group of fish. Generally the various families are better off introduced in one day. So for an aquarium you might say, okay we'll start off with the clownfish, we put the clownfish in, we let them establish themselves in the aquarium. Then a month later, in go the wrasses. We put any wrasses we want. Then in go the angels. So you'll generally have less problems introducing the fish if you introduce the families in groups. So a tang now and then a tang later tends to cause more problems, more friction, more fighting than the same tangs at the same time. There's also a bit of a size of mouth rule. Regardless of how aggressive or peaceful these fish are, if the biggest fish's mouth is big enough to eat the smallest fish, you can usually bet that regardless of what the species of the big fish is, it will normally eat the little fish because the fish are, after all, opportunists. And if the big one has an opportunity to eat the small one, that will normally happen. So make sure that your smallest fish are well and truly too big to be eaten by your bigger fish. You'll find too it's quite important to understand who the boss of your aquarium is. The boss's job is pretty much to control the other fish and make sure that there's not too much fighting in the aquarium. If your boss is very aggressive and is attacking the other fish in the aquarium, you really need to vote that boss out of parliament. So whether that means removing that fish or even putting something bigger in which might dominate that fish and then suppress its aggression. So watching the aggression of the fish you've got in the aquarium is really important and remembering that if you get one that's a rogue, you're really better off sending it back to the aquarium shop as opposed to keeping it in your aquarium where you're likely to get ongoing problems. A lot of people suffer from a situation that I call the damsel trap. What the damsel trap is, is that a lot of people start with hardy, cheap fish like damsels, which really are a good choice to start with because they're so easy to keep and they do tend to give the novices a good experience in the hobby because the fish are just so hardy. But also a lot of these hardy, cheap fish are also quite aggressive. So don't fall into the damsel trap. What the damsel trap is, is basically you start off with some hardy fish like damsels. They get very territorial in the aquarium. Then you try and introduce other species later on and find that they don't last for very long. And that's because they're getting bullied, harassed, or even purely killed by the damsels. So if you can imagine a new fish trying to get established into the aquarium, it's already got some very aggressive territorial damsels in there. And the new fish becomes almost like a ping pong ball. It goes in. This damsel says, get out of my house. It goes over here. This damsel says, get out of my house. 
So then the new fish end up ping-ponging around the tank. It can't actually establish a territory in the aquarium. It soon becomes stressed. It soon gets white spot or some other sort of problem and the fish soon dies. Then you try another fish and then you end up being under the impression that the only fish that work in the aquarium are the ones that you had in the first place. So one option is either take the fish back to the aquarium shop and actually trade them in or sometimes just rearranging the rocks and disturbing the current territories is enough to allow the new fish to come into the aquarium because the old fish are just disorientated.